Good morning, gang. I've actually filmed the last like two videos just on my GoPro. And it was so much easier for me to edit, and like I didn't hear anyone complaining. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna film all this on the GoPro. If you do actually prefer half at the GoPro, half at the main camera, then let me know, and I'll do it in the next in the next video. Mustang is here. In the last video we did the drift day. A few things happened. Obviously, a brake line popped, um, and mainly I was getting like a knock from the rear end, a really loud knock from the rear end. Um, and I've actually had a look, and this side of the car has like dropped. This side, this, this, it sounds like the knot's coming from this side, and this side of the car is dropped. Oh no, I don't know. Now I'm on a level ground, it actually looks all right. But anyway, there is a really bad knocking. I think it has still dropped. But anyway, there's a really bad knocking. So today we're going to dive into that and see if we can find out what this knocking is. Um, apparently, if you watched the last end of the video, apparently that movement in the axle, apparently that's normal. Now, I know what you're thinking, you think, no way, but I've actually put it on, like, American Mustang pages, UK Mustang pages, and every single person said, that's normal, that's a C-clip movement. If you want to get rid of that, you've got to get these C-clip eliminator things, which cost a fucking arm and a leg. Um, and I actually spoke to Max's previous owner, and he said that the previous owner to him actually welded the axles into the diff. So that's probably why he's probably done that, to stop that movement. First of all, I'm just going to empty all the tools in the drift day, and then we'll get it jacked up. And we'll start having a look around. Okay, I've got a car in the air, which is an absolute nightmare under these. Because you can't jack it up from the middle. Because if you jack it up from the diff, obviously it's just an axle, so the axle just <laughs> the axle just goes like this. It's a bit like a Land Rover if you jack it up from the axle. The springs and the shocks just kind of, they're not really attached, the diff isn't really attached to the body of the car, so it's a pain. Anyway, I've got it in the air. First of all, if you remember the drift day, when we said that the uh, calipers were sticking and I couldn't turn the wheel, now they're not. So I'm not sure if that was just a heat issue. I remember when I literally couldn't turn them. So anyway, that's good. That's kind of fixed itself. I've just ordered some new pads from American Place. I've some ceramic rear pads because it also, we're, lis we're missing a spring from this brake pad there. And that spring kind of pushes it into the caliper. So that even, that itself could be the issue of the, of the, of the brake pad knocking around in the car. Potentially unlikely, but still potentially kind of likely. So it's good that they're all spinning now. I have ordered some uh, rear pads and they're going to be here tomorrow. So we'll fit them. I don't know what pads these are and I'm missing a spring. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go under the car and I'm going to go through what I'm going to check, how I would check this. I mean, the, the worst thing is I have no idea how these floating live axles work or anything, but you can kind of just see things which are usually wrong. So let's just go under. Now, a good idea is to get online and have a look what, um, what was the common thing on these cars. So one thing I saw was the prop shaft U joints. So here's one of the joints of the prop shaft. And just check for in and out play, up and down play, there's a tiny little bit of up and down play. But like, I wouldn't say this a lot of play in that joint. And just look at all the bushes, okay? Look at the bushes and see if anything looks bad first. Now these bushes have been welded together. <laughs> so I know it's not gonna be them, but another thing is just get a bar, screwdriver, and just see if there's any play. Just grab all the arms, have a bit of a play around with everything. Just see if anything is making a noise when you grab it you know so there's a noise okay so if you look at the exhaust here it's a lot of play ah the it nothing in that one Ugh. now you kind of got to see where the noise is coming from so this we 100% out of the noise on this side of the car now sometimes the exhaust makes a noise which seems a lot worse than it is. Have a look at the state of this bush here, the rubber bushing, that's gonna fall off anytime soon. I am gonna message exhaust, I have messaged exhaust works and see if he'll do like a, an exhaust for us because he's like welds everywhere, exhaust blows everywhere, it's, it's terrible exhaust. So hopefully he can do something for us, that for us. And also look what I've seen up here, right? Let's see if we get the camera in. See this? This diff has been hitting that. I don't know when, I don't know where, but it 100%, I can feel the, in, the indent there from the diff casing, and where it's been hitting the top of the floor, 
Now that would 100% cause a noise that we've been hearing. Do, 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 do. That's a horrible noise. That's been rubbing against there. So we're going to raise the car even more because we don't want that happening. So today we're going to take the shocks off, drop the axle. And we're just going to raise the spring, raise the springs a bit because it is too low. Okay, I've got a really tight space, but I just went and checked the U-joint on the other end of the prop shaft, and uh, that's fine as well. So it's literally pointing towards the exhaust. The fact we've not got a spring on this caliper, and the diff hitting the floor. Um, and we're going to come in here and get a screwdriver, get a screwdriver, one of these, and literally just like pull on all the arms. And any, anything that flexes, it, you'll easily be able to tell. Okay, so on the other side of the car, um, where the original exhaust would have been rooted, there was actually a rubber mount and it's in good condition. So I've just took that off that side, it's not being used, because obviously the aftermarket exhaust uses a different one. Um, and I've just swapped it out. So there's, there's a new one. And now it's a lot solid, so we'll be able to test. It will still hit that, but it's not rocking on it. Um, so that's good. So I've also found the Bosch on here it's a poly bush it is a poly bush um but the bolt wasn't tight at all so it's an 18 mil or the american equivalent of an 18 mil um, i'm just going to tighten that now i'm going to check the other arm and i'm going to check them going into the diff as well okay so i'm coming to check the other side of the arm look how loose that is i mean it's not it's obviously just spinning the nut on the end but it shouldn't be that loose right so to get the axle down to change the spring gonna jack this one side up take the lower shock bolt off and hopefully i can drop it enough just to get the spring out so all the bolts are really weird it's a 15 bolt with an 80 mil nut now hopefully this whole thing just drops this size oh perfect look at that boom lovely easy peasy mate american what do you mean fucking great to work on <laughs> there's the spring and with it being off the car it's a lot easier. I'm actually happy with um, how free these threads are, to be fair. I'm just gonna put these down and then I'm just gonna clean the threads while they're off. For me to jack it up into that hole, I feel like I'm putting a lot of preload on this spring. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna see I'm gonna try if I can just wind off the shock a little bit and that's just gonna give us a little bit less preload on that spring. I always get a hammer and an extension. Just loosen the top collar off. There we go. So that is actually sliding the whole thing up. So I could just do that, but what I'm gonna try and do is make my life easier is just take the bottom off and spin the bottom. Perfect. So what a good way to do it is it's always good to get the actual spring rates from BC or whatever, but usually like a centimeter of preload, so like like, like 10 millimeters of preload is hard because it doesn't sit flush. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to jack the car up until we've got tension and it's sitting nice. Okay, so now that's about two mil, four mil, about eight mil. So that's preloaded there. So we're going to go just, we're going to go a little bit more just so it's at, there we go. So like three pumps. So we've got a decent amount of preload on there. And then now we're just gonna unthread the shock. So, if, so that it sits in that hole nicely. Okay, I can't get this collar to release off the threads. Um, I would be able to, but my vice grip isn't vice gripping because it's a bit bent, you see. So it's, it's actually not gripping this. It just keeps fucking popping off. So I'll do that another time. Okay, the springs are back on. That's everything I can do kind of to address that knocking. We've tightened them arms and um, we've raised the springs we're waiting for the pads to come tomorrow and we've put a new exhaust brush on the exhaust that's not rubbing so hopefully that's eliminated that that noise i've also forgot to do this if you remember we've grinded off the hydro and everything uh, but now it's just metal down here so i'm gonna, I'm gonna get a wire brush clean it up a little bit and just put some black paint over this here just so it doesn't rust um so we're going to do that now quickly what we'll do is i'll probably just remove the hydro and we'll paint that bracket as well so i remove the hydro and then we'll paint all this black here okay so i'm just going to try to just keep the hydro the cylinder out of the way clean this up with a bit of a wire brush and then we we'll just get it all black just paint it black mostly around here it doesn't have to be pretty but it's just going to look a lot better than it does now cleaned up as best as i can well not as best as i can but <laughs> somewhere i'm happy with gonna bag the cylinder up and we're just gonna put a little bit of coat of primer 
um, just so the black sticks a little bit better and I've got some gloss black and then we'll just bang that over. And then once that's drying, we're gonna actually look into scanning the car. I've never actually done a scan of the car. Um, so yeah, I, I'm pretty sure this is an OBD2 here. Uh, someone's left a thing in there. Um, so we're gonna put our Carly in. Um, or if, I think it's in the Audi actually. So we just got a little scanner, portable scanner here. So we'll just use that for the time being and see if it's actually picking up any codes. Okay, did I just did a scan um, and it come up. There was a few like random codes, like torque, converter, close, and guessing when it was an automatic um, at some point in its life. But there was one that said intake air temperature sensor. Now I reset the codes and I've just started the engine revved and it's not come back up again. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Google where that intake air temperature sensor is and we're gonna give it a bit of a clean. And we're also gonna give the math a bit of a clean on the drift day. Um, I did notice it kind of losing power halfway through the day when the car was getting hot. Um, and I've researched it and apparently some sensors cause that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean the sensors and uh, take them off. Now I'm not sure the intake air temperature sensor is also the MAF sensor, uh, but I've heard that the MAF sensor causes that. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at the MAF sensor. I'm gonna give a Google where the intake, intake air temperature sensors are on these. It could be the same as the MAF. And then we're gonna give the connector a clean and we're gonna give the actual sensor a clean as well. I'm just pulling the tat apart the intake. That is the plug to the MAF sensor. We'll give that a bit of a clean. On some places, it's saying the intake air temperature is like next to the mass sensor, but I can't find it. So I'm just going to pull apart this because the mass sensor is here and I don't really trust these two little bolts. So I'm just going to clean it from inside the intake. Um, and then I've messaged one of my friends called Anthony who's got one of these and I've just said, yo, is the intake air temperature the same as the mass sensor on these? Um, to me, it seems like it is, but I'll just double check. So we're going to give us a bit of clean from contact cleaner here. Just blast it all out and uh, if anything's on there, that will basically clean it up. There she is, and I can actually see a bit of shit on there. It looks like paint or something. Let me give all this big blast. There's actually so much dirt on there, I can actually see the coil now. So I'm gonna clean it up just so it gets rid of all the dirt on them prongs. That's definitely a coolant temperature sensor which it is working at the minute, but I don't know how. So we need to do one of them. It's a coolant temperature sensor. Now I need to find the intake air temperature sensor. Um, I thought that was like on the plenum kind of thing, but I'm looking and that's definitely coolant related. All this is definitely coolant related. So we need a new uh, coolant temperature sensor, 100%. Seen a post in, it says on the 2003, after 2001, um, they stopped putting the intake temperature sensor. Um, it's built, it's built into the mass sensor. Okay, cool. So me cleaning out the mass sensor should have done that. Uh, will fix that. But I'm gonna bring that shot back and just and pray that they've uh, they've got one of these. Right, why the mass sensor's drying and um, the paint inside here is drying, we're gonna get our <laughs> our new trusty old caramel wheel and we're gonna go at these stickers again because I fucking hate these stickers and I need to get them off. And every time I keep trying to get the stickers off, it starts raining. So it's not been raining for most of the day. Let's get the caramel wheel on. Let's get these fucking stickers off. I mean, I'm not sure if I like this thing. Um, I mean, it's a good idea, but all it does is just fucking smudge everything. Like, look. Like, it just smudges all the glue. Like, it doesn't really remove it. It literally just fucking smudges it all and also rips your fucking paint off. Um... <laughs> So I don't know if I'm a fan of this thing or not. I'm not gonna lie. It's raining. It's fucking raining. What did I tell you? I said as soon as I get this fucking thing out, it starts raining. And despite it's not rained early, to be fair, it is me. As soon as I took a fucking wheel, it usually starts raining. Fucking rain again. It's been literally raining for about three weeks non-stop now. It's an absolute piss take. Absolute fucking piss take. Pisses me off so much. People say, oh, you should bring the awning out. It won't even cover the car. Uh, and then you've got to do it manually. It will just take the absolute fucking piss. Um, apparently I've heard it takes a piss to do it. Uh, how about we just, the rain just fucks off for once in a while. I actually want to start prepping the car. So as you know, we are wrapping the car. I've actually got the wrap in, in literally in the garage, in the back of the garage. So, um, I, we are going to wrap the car. I did put a post on my Instagram. What I want to do is I want to get like maybe four or five people who can wrap. Uh, and then just come here one day on a nice day or I think we've, I've got a friend who says we can use his unit come to the unit um, and then just do like a panel each one or two panels each and then we can just literally have it wrapped in a day but until that I need to prep the car 
so mainly the front bumper the front bumper's all drift stitched so i've actually got a few tools to actually fix the drift stitch um so we're going to do that now i can probably just bring the move the bore a bit forward and just do it here underneath the shelter so i've got a lot of stuff i've got like some resin and some like drill bits and some like fiberglass sheets and stuff so we'll give it a go well why not give it a go now and there's obviously some bits on the car which needs sanding down so obviously these bits which get the stickers off that needs flattened down we've got a couple of dents there's a dent there which i'm going to put some filler in and just fill that over and then obviously we've got a lot of lacquer peel here which we need to sand back um, but other than that it's not too bad we need to get this sticker off which i'm going to use the caramel wheel but didn't there a bit of filler and that's usually a bit about it really and obviously just give a bit of the car a bit of a, a bit of a flat especially on these bits where all the tire marks are um, but it's not too bad you can literally just go literally probably wrap most of it now we can only just do it now but it look a bit shit so you can see here the gist ditch we want to give this a go of, of, of fixing it and putting it back together so we've got one there and then one down the bottom here so we'll back the bumper off and uh yeah let's just give it a go okay we've got the bumper here this is the bit we're we, we want to fix so i'm going to call these cable ties off um and then we're going to go inside and get the resin and the sheets and i'm just i've just followed a youtube tutorial on doing this and he looked like he pretty, did a pretty decent job um so yeah <laughs> i'll uh, maybe put that link in the bottom if someone wants to follow it properly but this is what i'm going to do so we're going to cut all these drift stitches off uh just so we can see where it bends and then we're going to go and get the resin and yeah let's give it a go we've got some of this jb plastic weld uh it's like a plastic epoxy and uh, we've got some fiberglass sheeting and then we've got some plastic bumper fillers so this is like body filler but it's just more um flexible because body filler is like used for metal so if that flexes like this will it'll probably just crack this might crack if it's being super flexible but it's going to be a little bit more elastic it even says on here ultra flexible so as well as that i've actually got some drill bits here um so these drill bits is basically just like dremel bits that you put in the end of a dremel um and now you'll understand when you see them so yeah just like that so what we're going to do is we're going to get a drill and we're going to shape the lines at the back of the bumper let me flip this over we're going to shape so obviously so we don't so if they're going to touch like that okay that's where it goes but we want the epoxy to sit in it so we're going to try get we're going to get these edges and we're going to make them into a v so you've got a nice v so the epoxy is going to get in there and grab hold of it so don't know how smooth we can do this but i'm going to give it the best shot i can give okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get some of these bits and i'm just going to shape as best as i can the edge is of the cracks with a into a v Okay, I'm just going to get some sandpaper and I'm just going to sand the edges. Okay, now you kind of want to hold it together. Now, it'd be good to get a vice grip on here, but the vice grip is going, I'm not, it has to just go where the crack is. So I'm just going to use masking tape and just tape it all over and hopefully it holds it nice and, and still, to be honest. Okay, that's as close to the original shape as it was. There's a little bit of a gap here, but I'm just getting that's where some plastic has kind of flaked off. So what we're going to do now is we're going to flip it over and we're going to prepare our resin. Okay, so now we want to mix this JB Weld together. So we've got a little, little stirrer thing here. So we're going to put, I think we, how do we, oh, there we go. Right, okay, so we're going to squirt this down here. Am I going? Do I need to press harder than that? I think it's coming out. Wait, why is one side coming out and the other side isn't? Oh, fuck it, alright, oh, okay, there we go. Right, that's quite a lot. Fuck it, then let's put this cap back on. Now we've got to mix it together, okay? So let's mix it together. And we're literally going to put it in that crack. Don't know how much to use the first time I've done this, but we'll just see how we get on and really try and get it into the crack as well. Probably need a bit more than this. Well, that's fine, can make more. Okay, so I've put some fiberglass sheeting down and then just layered a load of the glue on top. So it's gonna look like that, it's not the prettiest. In theory, I should have kind of um, grinded the, because someone's drilled through there. Um, in theory, I should have uh, 
cut them drill bits down because it was quite hard to get the fiber cleat the fiber sheet uh sheet into stick kind of thing um but i'm hopeful i've done a good enough job um hopefully that'll be better than nothing so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna let that dry for a while so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna tackle this other side this other bit i'm not sure why this bit is even kind of um cable tied to be fair with you but let's have a look and let's see if we can get this side done as well and then tomorrow or the next time we can just come fill the front of it paint sand you know the whole thing i actually can't believe how much of my life i'm dedicating just to remove stickers from a car it's an absolute joke they've been on there that long they're just basically like all blue i can't it's literally i'm taking hours of my life it's so annoying i've got most of them off don't be that guy who puts tons of stickers all over your car it doesn't look cool it looks so much nicer without them uh, anyway the car's dropped um it's a lot higher at the back now so hopefully that should be fine um i'm gonna let that bumper set overnight so i'm gonna leave that bumper there and then tomorrow or the day after i think I'm going to work tomorrow but the day after uh hopefully it's not fucking raining uh we're gonna start filling it down and then primering it um and then well yeah just prime it really so flat it down with some filler prime it and then just kind of get the car ready to be wrapped i do want this to happen sooner rather than later um but oh my god even just removing these stickers is just taking absolutely forever but yeah we've done a lot got done a, done a lot today i would like to take it for a drive and see if the knocking's any better um but i'm not gonna have a front bumper so <laughs> i don't think i'm gonna do that so for now guys i love you all um we're cracking on with the mustang update on these cars um this one i'm waiting for just i can't find a wing i can't i just can't find a wing anywhere i think i've got a couple but i can't find a wing and uh, i've had to order um one of the power steering lines from someone that i know who's going to post it because for some reason there's so many people breaking these cars only brief people breaking the golf no one fucking replies i know i'm I, I know i'm not the best for this any either but if you're breaking a car just reply to people like i've messaged about 20 people breaking these cars and none of them have replied regarding the power steering line or they have and then like a set of dates come get it and they just ignore me like it's so frustrating so i've got one of the posts coming and then hopefully i can pick up a bloody wing this week but it's so annoying 